Hi, this is Dr. Georgia. I hope you find today's message a blessing in your life. We want to make sure that we continue uh, to provide these video messages for you when you can't come to church or for those of you who live in a different state or we noticed recently we have a lot of people in even different countries who are tuning in. So if that is you and you can donate to us, we invite you to hit that donate button just below the message here. So thanks so much. Let us prepare ourselves, if you will, put your hand over your eyes. I open my eyes to see the spiritual truth today. I open my eyes to see the spiritual truth today. And over your ears, I open my ears to hear the spiritual truth today. I open my ears to hear the spiritual truth today. And now over your heart, and just extend out your arms. I open my heart to receive the spiritual truth today. I open my heart to receive the spiritual truth today. So let me just say up front, uh, I haven't had a coughing episode for three days now, so I'm assuming, but you know, when you take your car to the mechanic and it's fine, and then you get back on the road, it's not so fine, so uh, if that should happen, we have a plan, don't worry, just remain in your chairs and all will be good. All right, so the uh, spiritual truth that I'm working with today is that we live in a divinely ordered universe. We live in a divinely ordered universe. There is always day and there is always night. Always. Day and night. Every time. Day and night. It's not a matter of there's some God in the sky that is mad at somebody or all of us and says there will be no day today or there will be no night today. There's always day and night. Day and night. There's always a corresponding reaction to every action. Always. A corresponding reaction to every action. We live in a universe that is filled with loving energy that allows us always to have victory over the appearance of evil in our life. Always. That energy is available to us. We live in a, in a world in which on the meanest street, in the meanest sidewalk, if there is a crack, a dandelion can come up and brighten the day. We live in a divinely ordered universe. Now, the truth is, it is not the divine of a man in the sky who's pulling the strings. Don't you wish that were true sometimes? I do. I wish there was somebody up there saying, Georgia, what are you thinking? Go this way, not this way. But we're always a choice, living in a divinely ordered universe in our life. Now, there are a lot of definitions of God that we can come up with. And God is so big we can't even define God. But one of the ways that we teach about God here is that it is a set of changeless principles, spiritual principles that are changeless, which should give us some comfort because our life is changing all the time, all the time, all the time. And sometimes we have an event in our life or a crisis in our life when we least expect it. And that's when we want everybody in this church and on the planet to know that there is a set of divinely ordered spiritual principles that can bring us uh, to victory over whatever is happening in our life. And that should, that should absolutely give us comfort. Well, one of the ways that we're looking at the spiritual principles today is through the Toltec tradition. For those of you who are visiting, we are a church that we call ourselves uh, not non-denominational, we call ourselves a multi-faith church because we borrow from lots of different traditions that allow us to understand the truth of our being, that we are divine, and as Dr. Mary says, you are divine as well. One of the ways that we're working today is through a path called the Toltec tradition, which comes from Mexico. It was a, so a society that came together of artists and mathematicians and scientists and other people uh, that came together in order to understand how spirit work, great spirit worked in their lives and how they could benefit from it. And it is an oral tradition. It was never written down. Uh, it came from, uh, this book came, the Four Agreements came from a man named Don Miguel Ruiz. Don Miguel Ruiz 
was a Mexican physician. He was in a terrible car accident. And like a lot of us who were in a vent, an event, uh, it changed his life. And that's happened for us. We were in a car accident, or we got a bad diagnosis, or we uh, got fired from a job, or something happened that made us turn our lives around and change our priorities. And that's what's the truth of Don Miguel Ruiz. His priorities changed. He went to his mother, who was a shaman in the Toltec tradition. The oral tradition had been handed down to her, and now she was willing to hand it down to Don Miguel Ruiz, who stopped being a physician and became a shaman. One of the things that he did with his knowledge was write a little book that I think can change our lives. I talk about it every November because I think that if we can embrace these simple four agreements, you will have a happier holiday season. No matter whether you're going to your family of origin or your family of choice, or whether you're alone and don't have anybody to spend the holidays with, any of those scenarios can be stressful in our lives. And because it's stressful in my life, it's stressful in your life, and it's stressful in everybody's life. If you go to the mall right now, I'm telling you, it's filled with stressful, stressful people. And when we're in there, chances are we're a stressful, stressful person uh, in our life. With these four agreements, we can begin to be more proactive as to what happens this season. So we're going to start right now, and I'm going to run through all four. Usually I take a whole month, but today we're going to go all four in one sermon. The first one is be impeccable with your word. Now on the surface, it can, you can think that Don Miguel Ruiz is talking about lying. Don Miguel Ruiz is not talking about lying. He's talking about something much deeper than that. But because that's where our minds go, I want to share with you some of the beliefs I have about why we lie. I think we lie actually for only one reason. We are afraid of something. We're afraid we're not enough and we embellish ourselves. We're afraid we're going to hurt somebody else's feelings. Uh, we're afraid that we've screwed up somewhere and now we have to lie about it because people won't like us. It's all about fear. Now sometimes I want to be cautious because we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. There may be times in your life where lying is not a bad idea. It's going to keep you safe. But we want you to know that that's what you're doing. For instance, for years when I would go home, my aunt Asunta, little, I come from an Italian Catholic family, sweet little family, most, most of the time. And, uh, every Thanksgiving, my aunt Asunta would say, have you met a man? Now, I was not brave enough at the time that Aunt Asunta was alive to say what was really going on, so I would make up men's names, sure. You know, Herbie's doing great, or Fred, or Al, or one day I was being, feeling uh, especially brave, and I said, yeah, Mohammed is doing really well. <laughs> that stopped it for at least two years, but then I picked it right back up again. So sometimes lying keeps us safe, but generally and always, we want to ask ourselves when we lie, what's the fear going on here? What am I afraid of today that made me tell that lie? It'll make you feel better. It'll make you feel less guilty about yourself if you can understand with compassion that you just told a lie for some other reason. It was fear. But that's not really what Don Miguel Ruiz is talking about. Don Miguel Ruiz is, is talking about be impeccable with your word. And the, the, he's using the word in the uh, what we would know as the New Testament sense of John. In the beginning was the Word, and then the Word was with God, and then the Word was God. In other words, it is our creative energy. God is creator. You and I are creators. And our creation is done through our intention. Intention is synonymous with the Word. Be impeccable with your intention. 
be impeccable with the power of God that is within you called creator in your life. So when we ask ourselves, uh, don't, don't shortchange your creative ability. Don't short, shortchange your creative energy. Don't defile it. It's not about being bad or good. Being impeccable with your creative energy, being impeccable with your word, and the power of your word simply means be aware of it. Don't throw it away. I want to be able to create with my word. And that's what my word is all about, is creating. It's sort of like the way you finish the sentence, I am, is how, you, how impeccable you are with your word. I am good, or I am worthless. One is impeccable with your word and one is not. It's sort of like when your mother used to say, watch your mouth, young lady. We want to watch our intention here. Watch our word here. The second one is don't take things personally. Now I'm going to share with you, I have some issue with Don Miguel Ruiz around that, but I'm going to tell you what his teaching is because it's powerful teaching. Okay? So here's his teaching. His teaching is anybody who says anything about you that hurts your feelings is on them. It's not about you. What you think of me is none of my business. We're not born to say mean things to each other, to hurt each other's feelings. That's not our natural state. So if somebody says something to you that hurts your feelings, it's because they're not feeling good about themselves. And they want company for their own misery. So they're going to throw a little out there to see if they can't get you to join them being miserable. It has nothing to do with you. It's all on them. If someone hurts your feelings, it's on them. It's not about you. Unless, and here's where I take issue with Don Miguel Ruiz. If someone says something to you that hurts your feelings, you thank them. You clap for them. I had a spiritual teacher who would once say, Georgia, you need to tithe to that person who just hurt your feelings. Because what they've done for you is give you a giant signpost of healing you need to do. Somewhere in that hurt, you agree with them deep down. It's not about what they're saying. It's about what they've stimulated inside of you that you're saying to yourself. They're pointing the way to a button for you. And those of you going to family of origin or family of choice, I'm going to tell you your family of origin installed your buttons. They know exactly where they are. They know the language of that button. And they'll use it. So what we want to do is to begin to look at, oh, that hurt my feelings. I guess I have some healing to do around this issue. For instance, if you tell me I'm a bad teacher, it goes right over my head because I know I'm a good teacher. I don't even think about it. Talk to the hand. I don't care. It's not going to hurt my feelings. Now, if you say something to me about being of an advanced, mature age, <laughs> and especially if it replicates all of the ridiculous things people think about older adults in this society, that hurts my feeling. I go to my doctor, who's probably 15, I don't know. <laughs> and I love this kid, he's a great kid. <laughs> Well, whatever I go there for, he says, well, now you know, Georgia, you know, you know when we get to be a certain age, yeah, how would you know, first of all, what kind of certain age? And then he says stuff, and it, I, you know, it's, it's like I have to be careful, because if I'm not careful, and I agree with it, not only does it hurt my feelings, but then I start representing it in my life. So whenever my feelings are hurt, I give, I give God grace and thanks. And that person who showed up. See, everybody we attract in our life who hurts our feelings, we attract it 
We invited them in so that we could heal ourselves up to begin to know for sure that we are whole, perfect, and complete in our <coughs> life. See, when people call us into, when we've called people into our lives, we, we just, you know, and now I'm sort of thanking them. I'm not saying out loud so I don't make it worse, but I'm kind of thanking them inside. Thank you for calling me a dyke. Thank you. Thank you for calling me old. Thank you. Thank you for calling, for not paying back the money that you owe me. Thank you. Because in all of those areas and more, every area where somebody hurts my feelings, I've just been given a gift. And it's a gift I get to be gracious about and thank and then go home and heal in my life. The next one is don't, um, no, don't make assumptions. Do not make assumptions. Stop looking at the facts of this divinely ordered universe and start looking at the spiritual truth that God has provided for us. Because the facts aren't going to get us anywhere. The spiritual truth gets us somewhere. I know in my head, because I read about it, I pray about it, that we live in an unlimited universe. But like for some of you, sometimes money gets tight. And when money gets tight for me, that's where my focus goes. And where it needs to go is that I live in a divine... doesn't mean I ignore my bills. It means I put my focus on the divinity. I put my focus on the street name for God, which is abundance in my life. See, when I feel dis-ease in my life, when I get something, I need to focus on being whole, perfect, and complete, and not on whatever it is, whatever owie I have. But I'm a notorious person. You know, I get in, whatever I get, I get right on the air, on the internet. You know? Right? In fact, Dawn has turned off the Wi-Fi. If I complain about something, Wi-Fi goes off. Because, <laughs> you know, I can get an earache, and I can go in the... What, what happens? Why would somebody get in here? Oh, you mean it could be a brain tumor? And I have a brain tumor. I don't have anything little. My focus does not need to be on the effect. It needs to be on what's going on. That I am whole, perfect, and complete. And that's where I need to stay. When we say, uh, when we say uh, keep your focus on spiritual truth, we're, we're, we're saying um, try not to make stuff up. Try not to make stuff up. He has a, a little story in the book. Now look, I'm going to just stop. If you haven't read this book, get the book. Yeah. It'll make your holidays much better. Many of us have this book on our shelf. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't read it in years. Get it out. Read it again. Read it again. But he has a little story in the book about a woman who's uh, at, the, um, at a mall and she's uh, looking at clothes, and all of a sudden, a handsome man smiles at her across from, from a clear across the store. He smiles at her, and from that one smile, she has in her mind that first kiss, the first date, the wedding, how many kids they'll have. Now, she may not have. It doesn't mean don't have dreams. It means check things out before you go too far in your life. Don't make assumptions. So the last one is always do your best. Don Miguel Ruiz, uh, he's talking about uh, always do your best with the th first three. Try and be impeccable with your word. Now don't blame yourself if you don't. You know, you're going to have a dream, an intention, and you're going to start doubting it because that's what we do. Don't blame yourself. Be compassionate about yourself. And then get back on and be intentional with your work, your creative power in your life. Hook it up with God's creative power. And, you know, all of us, uh, all, all of us uh, will take things personally. We're going to do that. We're going to get our feelings hurt. Don't worry about it. Just remember what's going on here. It's not about you. It's about them. And they've just given you a great holiday present. But I want to enlarge the concept and talk about doing our best, not only with the first three of these agreements, but with every area of our life with our family life, with our work life, with our leisure life, with our friends life. Always 
doing our best. And the first one is to try and keep your mind free of reasons why things won't work. Try and keep your mind free of reasons things won't work. And the best way to do that is to get up every morning and before you go out and face your day, read something of a spiritual uplifting nature. Whether it's something out of the Science of Mind magazine, which is fabulous, or whether it's something out of the Quran, or the Bhagavad Gita, or the sutras, or anywhere, out of, out of something that, uh, go look at video, uh, inspirational videos like the one we had today. Pick yourself up before you go anywhere outside. The second one is, uh, understand this, the word selfish is only in the devil's dictionary. The word selfish is only in the devil's dictionary. You can't do things that are selfish. Every time you uplift yourself, you uplift those around you. Now, assuming you're not taking away from anybody else, but you're uplifting yourself. And people often stop themselves from doing that because they think that it's a selfish act. Know this, every time I am in the presence of somebody else who is happy and making themselves happy, I become happier. And so do you. The word selfish has to, we have to stop elevating that to some sort of a spiritual state. The word selfish is only in the devil's dictionary. The third one is set a goal for yourself every single morning. A goal for yourself every single morning. T.D. Jakes, who I adore, he says this, when you get up in the morning, have a plan as to how every activity that you've got going on that day is going to look. Actually play it out in your mind. When you get up on Thanksgiving morning, play out in your mind how that dinner is going to go. When you go to work in the morning, play that out. How is it going to go? And only play it out positively. Don't get into the, oh, God, she's going to be a woman. <laughs> <laughs> play it out positively every single morning. Get up. The fourth one is to give praise to yourself. Give praise to yourself with every little tiny step that you make. In fact, I hope all of you are here <coughs> and bring friends on Thanksgiving Eve, 7 o'clock. It's going to be a great uh, service. The choir will be here. The band will be here. And I'm going to talk about Thanksgiving, of course. But I started thinking about it while I was in Albuquerque last week. And it occurred to me, I have said the same thing about Thanksgiving, the spiritual <coughs> principles, because spiritual principles are unchanging. I've said pretty much the same thing for a long time. This year, I'm going to talk about giving thanks to ourselves, learning how to praise ourselves. So I hope you'll be here, but we can start right now. We have to resist the shoulda, coulda, woulda of our lives and just give praise for what we're doing. And the last one is let's learn how to allow other people to help us. This is a busy time of year, and you know how how good you feel when other people, when you help other people, it makes you feel good. Allow them that same feeling. Ask people for help when we need it. It's a spiritual practice. Let's take this message into prayer. There's only one power. It's the power of love, and it goes through me. And so when I embrace it, I'm just in a state of gratitude have to wait for Thanksgiving. I can do it right now by hooking up with the presence of God that is good. And so when I do that, I give thanks to everybody here who came here this morning. I give thanks to our sound team. I give thanks to our music team. I give thanks to our ushers. I give thanks to Steve for being just a rock in this church as a Sunday coordinator. I give thanks. I release this word into the law, together we say, and so it is.